Tuesday, we get rid of the fractions, we multiply by a common denominator. What did we say about the common denominators on Tuesday? Y'all remember? Look at what's on the bottom, Matthew, and do what? Use everything at one time. So, this is what I showed you on Tuesday. You could write 2, 10, and x, right? But I said something else. I said you can mark one of them out if what? Yeah, if 2 divides into 10, you mark it out. So our common denominator, 10x, 10x. Write that above each fraction. Now, if you don't mark out the 2, it's okay. You'll get the same answer. This will make it a little bit longer. Everybody good on that? So everything on the bottom, use it one time each. All right, now I think that's the hardest part. The rest of it's pretty easy. What can I mark out? X marks out X, right? What else? 2 goes into 10 five times. So what do I bring down? 5 times 5 is 25. So first divide everything out. Whatever's left over, you times them together. All right, second fraction. What do I cancel out? 10. What do I bring down? Good, minus 3x. Last fraction, what do I cancel out? What do I bring down? All right, so again, this is what we did the other day in the left column. This isn't bad. Solve that equation now and get an answer. Move positive 25 over, make it a negative 25. Positive 25, move it over here, make it a negative. I got negative 3x equals negative 15. And I was just looking at Harlan's paper. We got the same answer. We got 5. All right, so that's basically how you do all the problems in the left column if you missed Tuesday. All right, so now we're going to do some different type of stuff. Everybody got 14 copies. All right, let's go to 11 now. <laughs> Write it down, I got x over x squared minus 3 equals 5 over x plus 4. Okay, how is this problem different from every problem in the left column? Well, we got an exponent, but what else do we have on the bottom? <clears throat> we got plus signs and minus signs. I don't think we had any on the left column. Let me check. We did not. All right, so these are different. Now, the rule stays the same. Find a common denominator. Use everything on the bottom one time. So I got to write down x squared minus 3 and x plus 4. I got to use them both. x squared minus 3 and x plus 4. So when it has plus signs and minus signs on the bottom, guys, you got to use the whole bottom. You can't just use parts like we were using on all the other problems. Plus signs and minus signs make it an expression. You got to use the whole expression. Which is really going to make this problem easier, I think, than what you did earlier. All right, so Harlan, number 11, what cancels out on the first fraction? X squared minus 3. All right, guys, look. Y'all see how those cancel, right? Whatever's left, you just times it and bring it down. So X times X is X squared. X times 4 is 4X. And that's how you do it when they're like this. All right, Brooke, what cancels out on the second fraction, the one on the right? What do you bring down, Brooke? All right, anybody got a question how Brooke got 5x squared minus 15? You just distribute 5 times x squared and 5 times 3. All right, now, if you have an x squared left over, you know we're going to have to do quadratic formula, right? So we've got to get everything on one side. So we can get it in order, so we can plug it in our quadratic formula. So I'm going to move 1x squared over here. How's that going to change it? <sighs> All right, so now i got 4x squared over there. Right. I'm going to move positive 4x over there. How am I going to change it? Be negative 4x, right? And negative 15 was already over there. All right, put that in your quadratic formula, and you will be done.
Somebody help me. What'd y'all get inside the square root symbol? 256. Look on the board. 256. 16. So I got 4 plus or minus 16 over 8. Okay, now find both answers. Twenty over eight, that's five over two, right? And then negative twelve over eight is negative three over two. Y'all check my answers, make sure I'm good. Good. All right, so that's basically how we're going to do them all in the right column. Now, the first five, we're going to do the whole right column if y'all want to work ahead. The first five are going to pretty much be like this. Uh, the last four are going to be a little bit longer. All right, let's go to twelve. I need to slow down and stop. Y'all tell me. Well, we got a over a minus one. Okay. All right, so what is going to be our common denominator on number 12? Look at it. Look at the bottom. Yeah, it's just a minus one. What's the rule? You've got to use everything that's on the bottom one time each. Well, you got a minus one on the bottom on both of them. So a minus one, a minus one, and a minus one. All right, y'all go from there. Look at all the bottoms of the fractions and use everything one time each for your common denominator. All right, look at this one. What cancels out on the first one, guys? A minus one cancels, right? So what do I do? I just bring down the A. I didn't have anything left over I could multiply it with. All right, does anything cancel out on the second fraction right here? No, because look, there's nothing on the bottom. So what do you bring down? A times A is A squared. A times 1 is 1A. One Matthew, what marks out on the third fraction? What do I bring down? Well, there's nothing left to multiply, is there? Because we marked them out. So what do I do? I just bring down 4a minus 3. All right, now let's do like terms. Y'all look at this. I got a 1a minus 1a. What happens to them? Cancel out. So we got a squared minus 4a plus 3 equals 0. Write it down. Now you guys can factor that or do quadratic formula. That one is so quick and easy to factor. Let's just factor. Everybody factor this one to get your answers. I want to make y'all factor the easy ones. This is definitely an easy one. All right, Harlan, can you factor this one for me? Uh, negative 3 and negative 1. All right, Harlan says negative 3 and negative 1. Why? Because they've got to add up to negative 4 and times to give you positive 3. So he's right. Don't forget, you've got to move minus 3 over, and you've got to move minus 1 over. All right, so I didn't think that was that bad. Now we've got a new step. We've got to mark out this answer. Can't have one as an answer. How come? Let's think about it. If I plug 3 back in the problem, if I plug 3 in this one on the bottom, 3 minus 1 is 2, that's okay. But what happens if I plug 1 on the bottom right here? I get 1 minus 1. I get 0 on the bottom of a fraction. You can never have that. It would make the whole problem no solution. Anytime that happens, Matthew, you've got to throw that answer out. So we're going to have to start checking that on all these problems. We're going to have to get our answers, look at them, see if it'll give us a zero on the bottom. If it does, you got to throw it out. So the only answer on that one is three. All 
right, let's go to 13. I think 13 is pretty easy. X over X minus 5 plus X over X minus 5 equals 3. All right, what's your common denominator? This one looks just like 12 to me. What's your common denominator going to be if y'all had to guess? X minus 5. Remember, you use everything on the bottom one time each. So I just put an X minus 5 above each fraction one time. All right, y'all try this. Let's see what y'all got. These mark out, so I just bring down X. These mark out, I just bring down X. All right, look, what marks out over here on this last fraction? Nothing. So what do I bring down? 3X minus 15. So yeah, this one should be really quick, really easy. All right, combine your like terms. You now 1X and 1X. Move it over. I got positive 15. Somebody check me. All right. So a lot of our problems that we have on the test, which will be next week, are going to be just this easy. All right, we've already completed 14, so next is 15. Anybody have a question here on 13? All right, let's go to 14. Sorry, 15. I got one. One over x minus one plus two over x equals zero. All right, look at 15. What's your common denominator going to be? You got to use everything on the bottom one time, right? And when you got a plus or a minus, remember you can't split it up and just use parts of it. So we got to use x and x minus one. X and x minus one. X and x minus one. All right, go from there. All right, see what we got on 15. All right, my x minus 1's cancel out. Times what's left, I bring down 1x. X is canceled. What do I bring down on the second fraction? 2x minus 2, good. Third fraction. It's an easy one. Yeah, because when you time something by 0, you just get 0. So again, 15's really quick, really easy. What's y'all's answer to? Somebody's already got it. What is it, check? Two thirds? Add these two up. I got 3x equals 2. Divide, yep, two thirds. All right, now the last five are going to be longer. So 16 and 17 are pretty nasty. Everybody good on 15? All right, let's go to 16. 16, let's write it down. Do y'all see where it's got a 4t up top? I don't really draw that very well. I'm going to write 4x. So if you write it down, make it an x. 3x minus 2 on the bottom. 2x, 3x plus 2 on the bottom equals 2. Right, so I've just replaced the x's for the t's. All right, anybody got an idea about a common denominator on this one? You gotta use one of everything on the bottom. What's that mean? You gotta use both of them, right? 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 2. You can't break them up when it's got a plus or a minus. So I'm gonna now look, some people do this. They write 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 2, and they just use that for all their crossing out. I like to write it all three times. You don't have to. Want to write it one time up there? That's fine. All 
All right, so what cancels out on the first fraction? All right, good. All right, Matthew, what do I bring down? Four times four, that's 12x squared, right? And four times two is plus 8x. We're good? See how I got that? All right, you're going to do the same thing on the second fraction. Mark out 3x plus 2. What do I bring down on this one? 6x squared minus 4x. Anybody have a question so far? All right, this is where I lose people sometimes. Y'all watch me on the last one. Can I mark out anything? No, because there's nothing on the bottom. So here's what you do. You multiply 2 by the first one. You just distribute. That's going to give you 6x minus 4. Bring down the third one. And what do y'all think we have to do here? Now you got a 4. So you only have to multiply one of the parentheses by the 2, not both of them. All right, pull that out, and then we'll start doing our like terms. All right, do you guys see anything on the left side, they're like terms. Let's see, I can add these two up. So that give me 18x squared. I can add these two up. That's plus 4x. All right, how about the right side of the equal sign? Anything there has like terms? Yeah, so let's just mark these out. 12 minus 12 is 0. All right, so here's the deal. Remember, when you have an x squared, you got to do quadratic formula, so we got to get everything on one side. What's going to happen with 18x squared when I move it over here? It becomes a negative 18x squared, and you cancel them out. All right, so all we got left, Matthew, is 4x equals negative 8. So what's my answer? Divide by 4, get negative 2. All right, that is an example of one that's pretty long. I can't give you many of these long ones on the test because it takes so much time. All right, 17 looks just like 16 to me. I'm assuming it's going to be similar. So you guys that want to go ahead and work ahead, go ahead and do 17. When I'm writing it down, it says 2W on top. I'm going to write 2X. 2X plus 3 on the bottom. All right, so just like on the last problem, this one's very similar. What's our common denominator going to be on this one? Yes, sir, i got to use one of each. 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. All right, y'all see if y'all can do the first step without making a mistake. Do your crossing out step. All right, so we mark out 2x plus 3, and I bring down 4x squared minus 6x. Y'all let me know if I mess up. All right, watch me here. If you mess up on this one, this is where it's going to be. Everybody watch. I mark out 2x minus 3, right? What do I got to distribute by? Negative 2x. Negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. I'm betting somebody forgot to distribute their negative. I bet a lot of people do. Happens every year. All right, last step. Look, is it going to change anything if I distribute my 1? No, so just go ahead and fold these two out. 4x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 9. All right, write that down. Now you guys do your like terms. Combine your like terms on the left. All right, let's see what you got. All right, guys, look. 
think these two mark out, right? So I got negative 12x on the left. Does anything mark out on the right? Yeah. 6x is a mark out. I got 4x squared minus 9. All right, we're good? Now, do I have an x squared in the problem? Yes, so I'm going to have to do quadratic formula. I got to move this over. I got 4x squared plus 12x minus 9 equals 0. Y'all do quadratic on that and see what you get. All right, let's go to 18. Everybody got 17 copies. Eighteen. Twelve over x squared minus sixteen. All right, we got something new on eighteen. Look at it. What's different about it? Yeah, it can be factored. Which one can be factored? Yeah, if you get an x squared, try to factor the bottom. Okay, we should know how to factor the bottom on this. 16 is a perfect square, right? What's square root of 16? So it's x plus 4, x minus 4. All right, so on these last three, you're going to have to factor something first. Now do your common denominator. All right, so what is our common denominator on this one? got to use one of everything on the bottom, so i got to use 1x plus 4 and 1x minus 4. All right, go from there. So you're crossing out now.